This is Doug Green, and I'm the publisher of Telecom Reseller, and I'm very pleased to have with me today Tyler Ashby of Agents Only. Tyler, thank you for joining me today. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I hope I can share with your listeners the opportunity we've created for him. Thank you for well, having great. me. I, you know, I'm very excited to uh, do this podcast because here we have a company that is kind of like uh, pushing all, the, checking all the boxes, pushing all the buttons on a lot of the things we report on and a lot of the stuff that I know that our readers are dealing with as technologists or as people selling technology products. We, uh, we have somebody who's looking at the gig worker, somebody who's looking at hybrid work, which we're reporting on nonstop. We have somebody looking at CCAS and we also, also and, and customer experience. We also have a company using AI in, in yet another very innovative and interesting way. So we're going to dive into all that in just a minute. But first, Tyler, what is Agents Only? Yeah, Agents Only is a gig CX software platform that solves contact center challenges. I think the basic idea would be we connect brands with experienced professional gig call center agents. And then we have a platform that provides integration tools, gamification, invoicing, scheduling, anything that is needed to make it easy for the operator to use the platform and engage in the gig economy, and then genuinely engage the agent on, on their side so that they're engaging with the brands and giving the brands what they want. So it's a platform. Some people like to compare it to Uber or Fiverr or Upwork. I think we have some more important features, but that's not a bad way to think about it. The, the Uber of contact centers, you can find the best people whenever you need them, wherever they are. So, and, and, you know, you were just telling me that, uh, that as, uh, if anyone's thinking, well, yeah, but this is sort of new, you guys have actually already processed over $250 million worth of transactions on behalf of clients. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Uh, we had a very large client and then a smaller hospitality client. Uh, we were been operating on the platform since 2021. Uh, we have a lot of things that we believed in terms of the gig workforce, removing command and control, platform features. We wanted to prove that it worked. Um, and so we were kind of in this stealth mode where we weren't showing anybody the platform, even those clients that processed that 250 million in rev for, they didn't get to see a lot of pieces of the platform as part of our strategy. We're, we're, we're past that strategy now. We're proven, we're, we're, we believe our convictions, we've seen the software work, and we want to show people how the platform can give them access to the gig economy. Now, I'm sure everyone's interested in understanding the AI component of it. So how are you using AI to do this? Yeah, we're using AI very much in an internal facing manner, right? Mm -hmm. So we're using AI from the beginning to match the right agents, and their skill sets to the proper clients. Not a huge range of value in that. A lot of agents can do a lot of different things. So the benefit in the AI there is not as significant as where we see it developing agents. So, you know, we're attacking the gig approach in a true sense. They don't have a supervisor, they don't have a boss, but they do care about performance. They do need to engage with the brand. They do need to develop skills. And that's how we're using the AI. So the AI is agent facing. We have a star rating, which would be more of a quantitative AI, which rates the call with behaviors, performance, outcome data. And then there's a coaching AI, my AI. So you're gonna get your star rating on every call. You're gonna get incentivized on every call. And then if you as an agent wanna engage in a self-development session, the AI is there with expert tips from novice all the way to expert on how you can develop. And if you don't understand, you can have a natural language conversation with the AI I don't understand what developing sense of urgency is. I don't understand how to create an affirmative close. So we've found very large amounts of success internally using AI, development of people, removing command and control, and really emphasizing influence. So, you know, as you describe that, I, I'm thinking two things, which probably helps you attract talent, which is that's such a different, that's such a refreshed way to manage the contact center worker. Because, you know, as we were talking about just before we started, you know, I've heard it said by people, you know, no one no one probably started out in life saying, you know, gee, I really want to be a contact center worker. It's great work, it's honorable work and so on, but it often use, usually is kind of a transitional kind of job. Uh, you know, folks are needing a buck or two, 
they are a student, their uh, their spouse is abroad doing something, or you know, there there's all these different circumstances that happen, um, and so there are pools of talent out there that may not even know that you know they could have this opportunity to do some some work, and you've created it in such a way that you don't have to make a long term commitment to a company. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. I, I think that in general, the contract that people have or the, the offer that contact center companies or even companies that are doing contact center work directly, the deal that they have with their agent is not a fair deal. It, it doesn't appeal to what they're trying to accomplish. You know, it used to be that in the call center, you had a true career opportunity. In the 70s, a guy who worked at MCI could become the vice president. That career path is not genuinely seen in the call center anymore. So when we take away this command and control, maybe supervisors that are not really up to the speed, different politics and just bad people decisions in the call center and we replace that with, here's a client who wants this work done at this time with this value. And it seems like a much different offering. I, I, I think that, and I go back to, you know, you said not everybody wants to grow up to be a call center, maybe nobody, but I think so many people do start there. And so many people succeed from those skill sets. And I can think of people of my friends now who have actually on the calls, US, we, we predominantly did most of our work offshore, but we did do onshore work and that was client appetite for price. But these are people that took restaurant phone calls in a, as a contact center gig agent who had never done anything like that before. They have legit college degrees, but it was very similar to what you're seeing in the other places of the gig economy. I get to work when I want, I have the flexibility, it enables my life, right? And so we're definitely reaching out to a larger talent pool than what's been you know, attracted into contact centers previously. You know, as also we were talking about too, from a human resources perspective, both ways for the person looking for a job and for the person looking for talent. This reminds me of uh, the temporary agent of, of, of an earlier era, which then the big advantage of that was, well, you could, you know, try on people. If you're the employer, they could try you out. And, and there weren't emotional, you know, the worst that happened is a couple of, a, a person came in for a few days and it wasn't a good match and everyone was, was none the worse for it. Um, you know, but, if you found a good person or they found a good employer, you know, there were good matches made. It sounds like th this is what you're talking about that to, to, cause that's what real life is about, right? To your, to your great surprise, you find yourself all of a sudden working your way up or, or being in an industry that you're suddenly comfortable with that you didn't expect. Um, and you're thinking that this will happen here in this industry too, the, the gig economy. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're just, like you said, we're trying to connect brands and agents that like each other. They haven't agreed. Like some people don't like sales. Some people like, some people would love to be a Lululemon rep. Some people would never dream of being a Bayek rep. But I think it's about matching the agents with the clients that they want to work with in a setting that they agree with. And I think the, the advancement of the temp agency is data. There's a whole lot less risk we have all of that data as they sign on to our platform part of their end user agreement is an agreement to share their behavior performance and commitment data so i think we can take a lot of the benefits of the easy friendly matchmaking of the temp agency but we can make it a whole lot more secure and decrease the failure rates with data and just better match matchmaking with the clients let me uh, work my way through the uh, blocks of different readers and uh, listeners that we have for the larger enterprise IT people, the, the guys that are managing basic, the people that are running uh, the IT, the technology and inside the contact center and so on, is this something that they should look at? Is this an opportunity that they can bring to, to their team as a solution? They, I, I, obviously it's from my perspective, a little biased, but I definitely believe they do. Uh, we've built it in a way that it's both agnostic and very scalable. So you can try it on for size. You don't need to change your CSS if you don't want to. We can integrate with all of your different data sources. Now we have recommendations on who we've tested and who could be the best, but from an IT manager's perspective, it is a very safe and easy digital transformation. It's a very short roadmap. You can give your operations access to all of the benefits of the gig economy with very little investment on the IT side. 
if you then choose to make it a core part of your strategy, you could definitely invest more in data and pipelines to make a more efficient operation. But for those large CTOs running large tech orgs, easy, short roadmap that enables your operation to get results quick. Like you could test it before the fourth quarter. Now, is there an opportunity here for the channel and for the MSP community, for the people that are selling solutions? I, I, I think definitely. At the end of the day, you know, the most important integration for, you know, a contact center in the cloud or a gig contact center is how you connect the customer to the agent. So the tools that those, those people have in terms of those channels, whether it be they're doing automated QA or AA supported data, or they're providing the call or the chat or the information, I, I think that allowing, you know, combining this type of gig software and gig workforce to your solution ex expands who, who, which clients you're able to service. I mean, we're truly global. You could go anywhere if you needed to. Um, and our integrations are simple. So I, I think that Depending on your strategy for those guys, whether they want to service their own agents, their own clients, their own customers, or they want to integrate in a way so that other clients can adopt their CSAS because it gives them access to the gig economy easier. I think there's a lot of different ways you can bet on the gig economy using a platform. And finally, for the, the carriers, the CSPs that we reach, uh, are there applications here for them too? I'll go back to the most fundamental, which is you have a customer base that you're serving. And I think that's the best best place to start. If you have a customer base that you're serving and you want to have a meaningful contact, then you need quality talent. And I believe we've proven you can access the right amount of talent at the right, at the right price. So I think they can probably elevate their experience without breaking their cost profiles. I mean, I don't wanna sometimes in assessing other people's business, maybe I can, I don't want to offend them, but I, I feel they're all very cost conscious, right? Which is no problem, maybe can be short-sighted, but I think gig is a place where the cost benefits are immediate and you don't have to make trade-offs for experience. So if you're in, in that area where, you know, you don't have the money to spend, I think it's an in-year return. So, you know, Tyler, it seems to me as we wrap up our podcast today that you really put things together in a kind of interesting way that, uh, you know, all the different technologies, everything sort of lined up to be able to do something we couldn't do before. Absolutely. I would say our founder has had this in his head for 20, 30 years. And I don't think it really came off the shelf until 2017, 2018. It didn't really hit the ground into development 2020. And that's tech, technology enabled, like the contact center space, the technology for internet, things needed to move to the cloud, the, the sending of the calls, the data recording, the access to the CRM systems, the on-demand pricing and the cloud work anywhere infrastructure is what makes gig contact center a reality. Um, so now that we have all of this technology, we can go out there and get you the right talent. We can do the right amount of screening and verification on our end where we do behavior, personality tests, basic skill tests, and then we have an opportunity where the client then can take that, that testing and further implement their own set of rigorous testing to make sure that they're getting the right agent. 100% of the agent's data is available to the client for as long as they're on the platform. It's part of their EULA. It's all about transparency. We want to make sure that the client is getting who they want and the agent is also getting the client they want. And so on our platform, they rate each other. Agents rate clients. And if you have a poor performing account or your training is poor or you don't pay commensurate for the skill that you're asking for, you're going to receive a low rating and you're going to have a hard time attracting talent. Um, and so I think just the technology and then both sides, the clients and the agents being treated fairly is going to bring about the best talent and the best outcomes. That's really what we're hoping to do is bring the solution to everybody, both client side as an operator, agents and have people create solutions themselves. Well, Tyler, I really want to thank you for joining me today and giving everybody a brief introductory overview of Agents Only. Where can we learn more? Uh, we have a website. You can go to our website at w.agentsonly.com. I'm active on LinkedIn. If anybody wants to have any questions about the gig economy or how we do things, or even better, you want to test the platform, it's testable. So reach out to me, go to our website, and we can take it from there. 
Thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Thank you for the opportunity, Doc. It was wonderful.